Okay, this is a cool fly. Um, we already filmed its little brother, the bruiser bugger, and this one is the articulator bruiser bugger. Pretty much the same fly, just uh, with, with two hooks. It's designed to be uh, an articulated streamer that you can kind of crank out fairly quickly. It doesn't have a deer hair head or a spun dubbing loop head. It's, it's pretty basic, so let's just jump right in. Um, just like most of my streamers, I like the Daiichi 2461 size 4 in the back and size 2 in the front. Um, if I go bigger than that, then I'll, I'll do a, a 2 in the, the back and a, and a size 1 in the front. But this one is going to be a little bit dialed down. So I'm going to start with 140 denier thread and just yellow and dress this hook. And we're pretty much going to tie a woolly bugger in the back. So I'll just take two pieces of strung marabou, if I can get them, just these two guys right here, and I'll line up the tips, and I'm just going to tie those in just like that. I'm going to moisten those a little bit so they don't get all over the place, but I'll just tie those in right here. And then I'll advance my thread forward and tie the rest of the, the feathers in just to kind of create an even body. So we'll wrap those down really well, tie them in tight. Okay, from here I'm going to use the reverse Palmer technique, so I'm going to tie in a piece of like 4X monofilament and let that hang off the back. Instead of using chenille on this one, I'm actually going to use gold ice dub. So I'm going to make a dubbing loop and I'm going to double it up so I've got four total strands in that loop. And then I like to wrap my thread behind that and it locks that loop closed. Puts a little bit of a twist in it, so I like to unwind that twist and then wrap my thread forward. From here, my favorite dubbing loop tool is just the gator grip with the, the shepherd's loop. So I'll stick that in there. And if I pull my dubbing out of the corner of the bag and just take it straight from the bag and just slide it up into the loop. It tends to stay there really well. And here's a little hack. You can grab a whole bunch of dubbing and put it in the loop. And as soon as I get as much dubbing as I want in there, you can redistribute. So I've got a whole bunch of dubbing. It's pretty thick. And I can come in here with my fingers and kind of make that loop a little bit longer and spread out the flash, spread the wealth. All right, from here, I'm just gonna twist that up. And before I wrap it forward, you can see it kind of bound down on itself. So I'm just gonna take a dubbing brush type tool, just pick it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And now, I'm going to wrap this forward using the rotary feature on my vise and I want to leave enough room to, to make a little head there because we're going to tie in hackle and some rubber legs. Okay, body's done. Now this, let me see if I can get the whole thing here, I'll start from the bottom. The hat beast is a Whiting American rooster saddle. And the reason I like it is because of these bad boys on the very back. It's the best slopping you'll find. Or on the East Coast, you call it schlapping. So, anyway. So I'm going to take this whole feather and I'm going to cut it in about half. because I'm going to use the back half for the back half of the fly. So here I've got this feather and I'm going to tie that in right here at the eye of the hook. I'm actually going to 
tie that in a little better so I can trim it off or fold it over like that. So once I have that tied in, I'm going to wrap that back backward. I'm going to catch it with the mono, wrap it back forward. So I am going to put a little hand whip finish in that right now so nothing comes unraveled. Um, all right, so from here, son of a In typical Cheech fashion, I pulled the hackle out. So I'm just going to tie it back in and actually cinch down on it this time and now we'll try that hand whip finish there we go okay the eye of that hook is not looking very happy right now but it's a streamer it's not a freaking soft tackle okay so I'm gonna start wrapping that hackle backward I kind of teased it to get it to lay how I want it I'm just going to wrap it back. It's going to be pretty ugly for a second. And then I'm just going to kind of pick those fibers out a little bit with this brush. And now I'll be able to catch this with the monofilament. Got to hang on to the, to the tip of that hackle. But I'm going to put two wraps right in the same place. Then I'm going to wiggle this back and forth as I wrap this forward. and tie this off. All right, so once I have that all tied off, I'm gonna come in here and tease both the hackle and the dubbing out together. Just like that. So I'm going to take one clump or one pair of those rubber legs and tie them in on one side of the hook and just stretch them and pull them over to the other side. So from here, I can clean up that head a little bit. This head got away from me a little. That's all right though. We can still put an articulation wire through there. And the front fly, or the front hook is what really matters on these things anyway. So just throw a whip finish on here. Rough looking head. All right, so I'm gonna trim those legs so that they go about halfway down into the tail. And boom, we have a fly. Okay, so we'll hit that with a little bit of varnish. Take that off and let it rest. Let it dry. All right, we're going to do a better head on this one. All right, so this is the Fulling Mill Streamer Stripper Hook in size 2. This is becoming one of my very favorite um, streamer hooks that there is. It just hooks fish really well. Retains them. I've never bent one out, so knock on wood. All right, so the weighting on this fly is going to be the hairline double pupil eye. And one cool thing about this fly is it actually plummets down quite a bit more than, say, an articulated trout slider or even a cheech leech uh, because of this eye. So We'll get it tied in. There's going to be a little bit of, st of stuff tied in at the front of the eye, so I want to leave a little bit of room just like that. All right. So make sure that the eye is nice and centered on the hook, and I'll just do figure eight wraps, a whole bunch of them until I'm satisfied that it won't move. And then wrap around the base of those, cinch those up, and We've got some eyes on a hook. I'll also put a little bit of varnish or super glue or something on those to keep them from moving around on me. 
Okay. Now comes the connection part. Okay, so now I'm going to connect the two flies together, and I'm going to take my articulation wire or Senyo's intruder wire, bead lawn, whatever you want to use, and I'm going to tie that in with a little bit extending forward um, through the eyes, and I want to wrap this down the bend of the hook probably a little bit further down the hook than I, I normally would. And the reason I wrap it down further is it prevents fouling. So I'll put my 3D bead on there or articulation bead. And now I'm going to string this back section on with the hook in the same orientation as I have the front section. And yes, this fly will ride hook point up because of the way I put the, the eyes on. So once I have it here, I'll just wrap that forward and trim the, the wire off so that it's even with the other one. Make a few real snug wraps right here and then pull those back on top of themselves and then cover them up nicely. Be careful at this point right here where you're wrapping over right where you cut. It's because it will cut your thread. Dang it. I totally wasn't going to do that. I just wanted to show where I was wrapping. <laughs> At least I called my shot. So this is what you're supposed to do. Loosen up your tension. Put lots of wraps right there. Put a little band-aid on it. Gosh. What an idiot. There's like a screw up like that on almost every fly that I film lately. I'm off my game. Okay, so we got it all wrapped up. You can see I've got my my uh, material clip on this vise kind of funny, uh, but I did that on purpose so I can just kind of jam the articulation or articulated section down into it. Okay, so I'm going to glue that. Um, never had a, a piece of wire pull out doing this method, so don't worry about that. It's pretty secure. Now I'm going to do the front half of the fly exactly like I did the back half. So no circus music. Maybe Curtis will find us something cool to listen to this time. You know, awesome. Okay, so we are pretty much done with the front section, but on this I'm tying in these legs and I'm going to wrap it down under the eye and pull it on the other side. So that's a little hack there. So on these I'll trim those, I don't know, you can play with different lengths, it doesn't matter as long as they kind of get out away from the body and flail around. So. The head on this one's pretty simple. I'm just going to take some more of this gold ice dub and I'm going to put a dubbing noodle on my thread. Just kind of loose and messy. And I'm going to just figure eight that in between the eyes. Maybe brush that out a little bit. Doesn't matter. That part just kind of covers up the bottom half of the head. 
And now from here, I'm going to take some Bruiser Blend um, in the original length, the two inch length, in Canary, which is just a yellow color. I'm going to take some of this and I'm just going to kind of preen it a little bit. So once I have that preened and I'm stroking it so that they're all facing the same direction, I'm just going to kind of find the halfway point and tie that in so that half of it's going over the, the eye of the hook and half of it's going toward the back. And now I'm just going to take that and fold it over and then tie down over the top of itself, making just a little bulb. Advance my thread toward the eye and whip finish it. So that adds just, just the right amount of bulk to your fly. It also kind of counteracts those uh, double pupil eyes so that it, it keels really nicely. And I forgot my comb, so we're just going to take our needle and brush it out. Maybe we could do this. Oh yeah, that looks pretty. So we're going to brush it out a little bit. So you can see that lays down really nicely on top of the fly. And then I'm going to take just like a, a light brown. This is the sepia colored chart pack marker. I'm just going to color a little bit of a brownish head and I'll blend that into the rest of the fly. As you can see, it kind of blends nicely. And then you can even come in with a, a darker color and just make a little dot of black there and then blend that black into the brown. Kind of looks cool. So anyway, that is the articulated bruiser bugger. Very simple to tie. It's kind of time consuming, but it'll move quite a bit of water and the fish like it.